Hello there, goblins and ghouls. So, today I'm going to remind you of the existence of some disreputable person named Marjorie Taylor Greene, who on July 27th, 2022, had the following to say on Twitter. Quote, the Supreme Court is three for three. Guns, life, and prayer. Thank you, President Trump, she said. Wow. How about that? What a thing to say. Now, practically any time I discuss Marge, I have to mention that she spoke at a white nationalist conference hosted by Nick Fuentes. And he said some, well, really disgusting things over the years. And in fact, I have a hard time finding anything he said that wasn't in some way disgusting. But anyway, I want to go over a few obvious flaws in her implications in that post. And of course, I'll branch out and uh, sort of, you know, uh, debunk some of those points. For starters, anyone who thinks the Supreme Court is ordained by God to do anything is fucking stupid, all right? There, I said it. I said it right, right out there in the surface. Um, the human stupidity is obvious. You can even see it in the face of somebody like Marjorie Taylor Greene. She looks like a weird, disjointed cartoon character. She's got, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't pick on somebody's looks, but I have a feeling she would do it to other people. So, you know, uh, we all know that Judge Brett Kavanaugh was really just a frat boy who liked beer. Like a lot of these powerful people, he was yet another person associated with Yale, in this case, Yale Law School. So basically, he was an elitist. You know, isn't that the same thing that the Republicans are constantly whining about? You know, we got these elitists running things. Well, what was Brett Kavanaugh other than that? Obviously, by this point, we know Yale and other Ivy League schools are supposed to be these amazing, incredible places, yet they give us these generic, empty-headed theocrats, and uh, a lot of these people are basically flushing this country down the toilet, right as I speak, uh, even now. But anyway, it was not God that saw him or any of his theocratic nutburger colleagues confirmed in the U.S. Supreme Court. It was whatever family connections and social status values were necessary to put them there. Now, this isn't to say that every Supreme Court justice is equally as slimy, but, you know, the dumbass God that Marjorie Taylor Greene is referring to has nothing to do with that. Okay, dum-dums? <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry, but you're, you're stupid. If, if you think, you know, God was, he looked down on the uh, earth and he was like, I need to put a frat boy in charge of the uh, U.S. Supreme Court. Let's get on that stat. You know, I mean, how, how would God even do that? Like, what, what was going through his beady little eyes and his mind when he saw that and his brain decided to take action? Uh, what was the... Uh, the sort of lightning bolt that he sent down to uh, create that chain reaction and set those dominoes into place. Um, can somebody explain that to me? Like, if you're one of these theocratic morons out there, go ahead and let me know. I'm, I'm sincerely really wanting you to elaborate on this crap, all right? God was not up in the sky, though, penning a passionate letter to his buddy Donald Trump saying, Hey, Donnie, could you take a little time from leering at your daughter to nominate this Brett Kavanaugh fella? Oh, and keep up the good work of speaking against windmills. We all know they cause cancer. Hey, maybe I could have made... Maybe I could have made windmills that don't cause cancer, but what the hell, I wanted to keep your people on your toes. You know? <laughs> I, God's a bit of a prankster, apparently, because he keeps on you know, uh, giving us these weird curveballs from up on high. Uh, do you know what all that God talk is, though? I mean, if I can be real here. It's yet another way for these right-wing loons to avoid 
going into greater detail on why they had made the right decision. You know, they don't have to explain anything factually or logically. Just say that God did it. You know, he was the one pulling the strings, and that'll be enough to convince your already unthinking dipshits to nod their heads like, yeah, God surely took the time out of his day up in the clouds to give us a beer-swilling moron and uh, put him into one of the highest positions of power in the world. Yeah! Yeah! He, surely there could be no other explanation. And of course, we know these Supreme Court justices engage in other sins as well, not just, you know, drinking beer and uh, any sort of perverted stuff, but they also lie. And I suppose lying can be perverted in its own way, right? And uh, of, of course, another great sin, uh, supposedly a, a terrible sin, is pride. Well, obviously, a lot of these Republicans are telling us to have pride in our country and you know, pride in our heritage, wink, wink, we all know what heritage actually means. But pride is considered one of the great sins, isn't it? Like, can't you actually go to hell for that? But they just, you know, brush that aside, like, oh, who cares? They don't even care about their own religion, you know. It's just picking and choosing for what's what seems right and what feels right at, at this moment in time. So regarding or regarding the Supreme Court's ruling to eliminate the constitutional right to an abortion as a federal protection. Susan Collins is quoted by NBC News as saying, quote, the, or this decision is inconsistent with what Justices Gorsuch and Kavanaugh said in their testimony and their, meaning, their meetings with me, where they both were insistent on the importance of supporting longstanding precedents that the country has relied upon. And you can find that quote in an art article from NBC News and probably other places. Uh, but every, everyone knows Susan Collins isn't the sharpest knife in the drawer. But nevertheless, she was smart enough to know that she needed to say something about all those audio clips of her saying she trusted those nominees. So in a way, she is correct to say they lied during their hearings. Or to imply that, I suppose I should say. That does not totally let Susan Collins off the hook, but it gives her a way to deflect blame for, for a radical theocratic Supreme Court that no, no longer cares at all about you know, the legal precedents their own institutions had previously set. And on that note, what else does all of this look like? Are these maybe activist judges we're talking about? Remember when all of these right-wingers out there were constantly lamenting how these liberal judges across the land were supposedly not adhering to the law and they were just being activists and treating it like the worst thing in the whole wide, in the whole wide world? Well, when the activism is slanting way more in their own theocratic, hypocritical, batshit crazy direction, the objections to any sort of judicial activism suddenly disappear, don't they? And so seemingly with each new day, we get a new reversal of a previous decision, or at least we were for a while, I'm, I'm sure it'll pick up steam again. And with each decision, it seems almost worse than the last, really almost as if they're merely playing, playing a game with the law or making the shit up as they go along, because they can. I mean, if you've read some of Clarence Thomas's writings in some of these decisions, it almost seems like he's playing a game with it. You know, like it's just him goofing around. So go ahead and look at some of what Clarence Thomas and others argued in some of the recent decisions. It doesn't seem like he was just trying to be objective in his interpretations of the law based on language within the laws themselves and you know, legal precedents or anything like that, or even, on, or even on what's popular. Some of these decisions are actually are not popular. And I, I guess we're finding that out with the recent uh, decision in Kansas, which said, no, we're not going to totally ban abortions in this state. It was as if they were, you know, writing the letter of the law themselves, 
with that school prayer decision, for another example, they actually tried to claim that the stupid coach was doing the prayers in private. Well, he wasn't. He obviously was not. Uh, they were acting at, or he was acting as a taxpayer-funded public school employee at a, you know, at an official school function. And, you know, students who were at those games or at those events were no doubt feeling pressure to actually participate in those prayers. And, you know, you really have to wonder if, uh, if it was a Muslim in the United States who was doing those prayers, would these same decisions be made, especially in such a haphazard manner? I would guess not. These, uh, same right-wingers would actually be lamenting that sort of thing. They would try to find a way to discriminate against it, I would assume, you know, based on precedent. Anyway, regarding that decision, I said this on Twitter. Here's me quoting myself. If I was an atheist teacher or gym coach, could I make a speech repudiating God in front of the students? Surely no one would create some double standard for freedom of expression for that religion-related view, right? So obviously they would. That's what I'm trying to imply there. And none of these dummies who complain about secular liberals stop to consider that amount of hypocrisy, how they wouldn't like it if either an anti-religion person started expressing their views to kids, and we all know these hyper-Christian theocrats would never want a Muslim prayer or meeting in a school, especially if it's, you know, being done by a teacher or a gym coach or, you know, any school employee. They would no doubt be saying, oh my God, this is the end of the world. It's a war on Christianity, etc., etc." Because, you know, hypocrisy is one of the greatest virtues in American society. And on top of that, of all that school prayer stuff or whatever, even though they always mention how great the founding fathers were, they will ignore how Thomas Jefferson was very much for secular government and even successfully worked to disestablish the Anglican church. But instead of adhering to that aspect of Jefferson's legacy, it seems these Republicans are more interested in bringing back the slavery kind of stuff you know, the, the bad parts of his legacy. Because again, Marjorie Taylor Greene and other prominent Republicans literally spoke at white nationalist events. And you have that oddball named Senator Mike Braun from Indiana who suggested that like abortion, interracial marriage should be quote unquote left up to the states. Now he did backtrack that position a little bit when there was a little bit of heat applied to him. But it was it was just because of that backlash. If uh, people were looking the other way, he would no doubt not have corrected himself. And really, that's one of the important things to note here. In order to get these people to uh, sort of walk back their terrible statements and uh, probably not enforce really shitty policies, the population has to constantly shame these idiots into uh, into basically being sane, I guess you might say. And let's remember that other prominent Republicans don't seem too keen on walking back such talking points. And it's a stupid talking point in general because when you refer to states' rights, you're overlooking the very premise that there is a federal government that was created by the founding fathers themselves, who again, these right-wingers claim to love so much. And you're also overlooking the basic fact that it's not supposed to be states that have rights, but people. In fact, contrary to how these right-wingers are acting now, one of the ways people used to be able to attain greater recognition of rights was through the checks and balances available in the system which despite all its flaws actually did sometimes prevent local or state governments from engaging in particular abuses. And uh, one of the checks and balances happens to involve the federal government. You know, things like Roe v. Wade 
lo loving v virginia which ended bans on interracial marriage and brown versus the board of education which ended segregation those all involved the federal government telling states what to do and oddly enough as as much as one could criticize the founding fathers it was actually they who decided to have a federal government that would sometimes you know decide through through supreme court decisions or maybe otherwise that a state is actually overreaching and violating you know uh, ordinary person's civil rights and their privacy rights of course republicans can sidestep these examples of actual reality with rhetoric about freedom uh, but can you imagine if these loons channeled some of that same passion authority and loyalty for a community of everyone rather than just these so-called faithful americans who have nevertheless also been suffering under a barrage of misguided policies and laws for decades so don't get me wrong the republicans are pretty talented at saying offensively stupid things or acting like a firebrand, as Matt Gates calls himself on Twitter, but they can never just act normal, can they? They can never have a normal, non-paranoid conversation just about policy anymore. And they keep on trying to shift this country into, you know, a crazy place where, you know, we're going to be told by, you know, the Pat Robertsons of the world, what we can and cannot do in our private lives and all that kind of stuff. So they're always on the attack and increasingly with vibrant or violent threats of civil war and, you know, these freaks of a feather like JD Vance and Jim Jordan are even urging Trump to uh, be returned to office and to fire all federal employees and replace them solely with Trump loyalists. And that folks would be beyond a mere coup that would actually be the legalization of a nightmare cult. <laughs> so, you know, that would be sort of a uh, game over scenario. There would be no opposition. It would basically become like North Korea at that point. And, you know, some people are seeing that and they're like, oh, that'd be freaking awesome. So that's why they are attacking from all angles. And it's time to stand up for our own rights as citizens and say no to the theocratic, kleptocratic system they're aiming to impose on everyone. And let me tell you, even if you think you are loyal to someone like Trump, you will never be loyal enough to such a malignant narcissist under an authoritarian system. That's just not how it works. Eventually, if if they find out that you're not loyal enough, you will be expendable to them. That's that's how this shit works out. That's why these totalitarian systems end up failing, even when they s might appear to be successful due to the propaganda that they pump out. They're ultimately going to fail. I guess the question is how catastrophic will the failure be for the individual populations? Uh, history has shown that regardless of ideology, any authoritarian system can potentially create innocent victims in a campaign of terror. If you look at how they've killed and maimed millions of people throughout history, and that would be people left, right, and center. In fact, Nazi Germany was not only a threat to Jews or other ethnic groups or political opponents. You know, it, it also proved to be a threat to the uh, handicapped. And uh, obviously it wasn't very good for a lot of people who just happened to get caught in the, you know, the crossfire, so to speak. And oddly enough, it ultimately proved deadly to itself. Remember, I mean, here's an iconic image. Adolf Hitler died of a self-inflicted gunshot wound in an underground bunker. So even he was practically a victim of his own ideology, if you really think about it. It's not much of a stretch to say that, right? He was sort of a literal victim of what he had imposed upon the population because it ended up being so bad and so divisive and deadly that he ended up having to kill himself <laughs> because people were 
obviously going to be warring against it. So by getting into these talking points, am I acting just like a hysterical, paranoid Republican? As some people might say, you know, am I, am I reflecting sort of the mirror image of the other side? I, I would love to be wrong on all of this. I would love to believe there is no danger posed by the authoritarian Republican Party as it stands now, and that people could by and large just live their lives normally, relatively free from fear, and enjoy the same level of privacy many of us had come to traditionally expect in America. It used to be a given that, for the most part, what you do in your own home was your own business. However, now thanks to things like the theocratic Supreme Court, they're going to try to micromanage people's sex lives. There was also a recent decision by the Supreme Court to make it so that if you have an incompetent lawyer, you might be able to be put to death for it anyway. And they don't even care if you could prove that your lawyer sucked because they're not going to hear your case. Or to put, put it more eloquently, as the Equal Justice Initiative did, they noted that in a 6-3 to three decision written by Justice Clarence Thomas, the Supreme Court ruled that a federal court may not consider new evidence outside the state court record in deciding whether the state violated a person's, six, a person's Sixth Amendment right to effective assistance of counsel at trial. So, I mean, there you have it. They're, like I said, they're attacking things from many different angles, making it so that even if you're wrongly convicted due to having a bad lawyer, well, they're not going to necessarily look at your case again. And that is quite striking to me. The same, com or the same conservatives who claim to be so pro-life are often more pro-death. Pro-death when it comes to prisoners, even when it comes to evidence that might exonerate them. Even putting aside death penalty cases, right-wingers are so often gleeful when they talk about prisons being dangerous places. They don't want them to be humane or anything like that. They just want, you know, more uh, pain and suffering. They are so often pro-death when it comes to people targeted by the police, pro-death when it comes to unborn babies being killed, or at least deformed by pollution, pro-death when it comes to war and drone strikes, pro-death when it comes to these pesky illegal immigrants who they wish to have little to no rights if they were to be recognized as human beings at all. In fact, at an ICE detention center, you know, some years ago, the anti-immigrant crowd proved to be anti-birth for at least 49 immigrant women. They're, they were coerced into sterilizing or being sterilized, these immigrant women, and this took place at the Irwin County Detention Center, the ICDC in Georgia, as revealed back in 2020. The media has been largely silent about that. But go ahead and look it up. Um, yeah. Georgia is Marjorie Taylor Greene's home state, I believe. So you would think she would actually care about that, right? But oh no, it's immigrants, so don't care about it. When I brought this up at, to at least one right-winger, I remember the person assuming the story was untrue. However, the story even brought enough heat on the ice a detention center that they apparently no longer are using that particular facility. However, we don't even know if that's the best news or not, or if ICE is just shifting their little activities to detention centers that are further out of sight and out of mind, you know, Guantanamo Bay style. So yeah, they are pro-death in, in plenty of ways. And now because of these right-wing theocrats, Every miscarried pregnancy becomes akin to an act of criminal suspicion. They also want you to have or to not have access to birth control or condoms and even want to tell you what sort of sex you can have. So that might include no anal, no oral, no homosexual sex, unless you are a deeply closeted Republican wanting to keep that hot by keeping it hush-hush. 
because you know i could imagine that closeted sex would be exciting for some people right even more so if you're like a conservative christian republican or hey maybe you are like matt gates and while looking like butthead born again as a lame game show host you're accused of sex trafficking a legally underage girl across state lines if you're like him you know marjorie taylor green will look the other way and in fact she'll spend a lot of time hanging out with you despite her you know uh q alliances you know if you're accused of that of uh <laughs> doing those kind of crimes. It won't matter if you've got an R next to your name instead of a D. I mean, isn't that convenient? But putting that aside, you know what else? If any other group had attacked the U.S. Capitol on January 6th, 2021, they would all be classified and dismissed as terrorists by these same right-wingers, and they know it. Dr. Randy Borum, a senior consultant to the U.S. Secret Service, and an advisor to the FBI's Behavior Analysis Unit, has defined terrorism as acts of violence intentionally perpetrated on civilian noncombatants with the goal of furthering some ideological, religious, or political objectives. Well, what was installing Trump as a dictator, but an overtly political goal? Uh, what's also scary is that with all of these neo-fascist neo-confederates and neo-theocrats controlling the GOP, we can legitimately place bets on which states will be the first to usher in renewed segregation and Jim Crow-style laws. And we can reasonably expect the federal government to attack its own citizens if they get their little wish for a civil war or the declaration of martial law, like some of these people have openly talked about. Uh, stuff will happen that might make 9-11 look like just another day. And a lot of these signs are there. You know, they're right out in the open. You know, you don't have to dig very deep at all. These politicians say this kind of stuff right in their speeches. We know state governments that have attempted to carry out these things in the past, including our own. And the messed up thing is that as they are plotting and scheming to make this racist, theocratic hellscape a reality, they're bashing any and all moderates who get in the way. If you think there should be at least some exceptions to anti-abortion rules, it must mean you outright love the phenomenon of abortion. Like, maybe you enjoy fetal nutrients as part of an essential diet, or something like that. You know, you know how these QAnon people are. They say lots of crazy stuff. You know, uh, they, they get right down to the core of lunacy. Uh, the far-right propagandists and smear merchants have shit tons of money, and they don't think, or and they don't think, you know that that that's a problem that their funding will dry up. And I, I don't think that they will ever run out of funding until people start to wake up and you know they want to start putting their critics in lovely privatized jails in their theocratic visions you know they they have no problems with um jailing political opponents so see how these things all go together as the system is more privatized and unaccountable any non-believers and what they're doing can be tossed in a cell, and these extremist loons can make a pretty penny in the process. Things are not getting dangerous just now, either. They have been that way for a long while. It's just becoming, you know, more concretized, more harder to look away from it, and more of these things are noticeably merging together. Whereas before, they were more like disparate strands, one might say. But now they're finally ready to take us over the cliff, and we might not even have a parachute or anything down there to break our fall. Sure, maybe America was at the top for a while, but it'll make, you know, it'll make the fall pretty harsh. It'll be a long way down, and we'll, we're falling pretty fast, I would say. So, all right, that's about all I got to say about it. Have a good day.